Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from Cool Cleveland. We are here at Exponent 2023, and we're here with John DeVore of DeVore Fidelity. Thank you so much, John, for taking time. Sure, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You know, uh, you are a relatively young man in a, a sort of old white man's world here. <laughs> I've, well, first of all, what do you think of that statement? I don't know that I believe it exactly. I'm a, I'm a middle-aged white man in a middle-aged white man's hobby, I would say. Very good. Excellent. So what we're talking about today is the topic of diversity in this field, whether it's age, gender, race. And I happened to bump into somebody next to you the other day, and I was talking to her about maybe doing the interview, and you raised your hand. You said, hey, I got something to say. And so I'd love to hear it. I really would. You've made such an impression with your company in Brooklyn and your speakers and all named after monkeys, which is cool. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, actually, I was uh, the other night when when we met, you were talking to um, actually, yeah, a, a fairly young Asian woman in the industry, which is a rarity. Uh, and I mostly was joking when I said, as a middle-aged white man, I have lots to say about the diversity issue. But um, I, you know, it is a real issue. I know, you know, I've been in the industry for a very long time, thirty years or so, and. Um, Throughout that entire 30 years of me being in the industry, the industry has talked and talked and talked about trying to diversify the clientele. The, the retailers are pulling their hair out because you know they're worried that they're, all their best customers are dying of old age. And you know manufacturers are wondering how to attract the attention of younger, a younger audience or a female audience. So, you know, here I am now, 30 years later, and I find myself literally at the center of the bell curve of the audiophile, right? Here I am in my mid-50s, white beard, sitting here pontificating and mansplaining to the universe about how we should be more diverse. It takes action. You know, just thinking about it a little bit, uh, just since a couple of nights ago when we first talked about this, walking around the show, I think it's going to take... So, over the years, habits become uh, become defined and calcified, and they become very difficult to to move out of. And so, from the inside, you're like, "We're doing everything right." It's it's just people just don't seem to be interested. It's just it's a guy thing. But if you look at it from the outside, all you see are walls. So you have to figure out a way to 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 have doors in the walls at the very least, if not tear down the walls. And that's like a it becomes a proactive act like um, you have to you have to compensate for the fact that you've literally been pushing these people away for for decades and so walking around the the halls I'm like you know first thing a lot of these demo rooms have it's a three-day hi-fi show these demo rooms have a playlist of three tracks right they've got Stevie Ray Vaughan they've got <laughs> Eric Clapton and they've got some breathy woman singing overly breathy standards right and that's it. All you know, you're not going to attract a new crowd. You're literally that's like bait for middle-aged white men. There's you have to. No young person is going to be able to connect with anything that's going on in that room, regardless of how amazing the equipment is. So part of that is recruiting young people, female people, non-white people to to run the rooms or be in the companies and yeah yeah or or even just be like suggest you know maybe it's, maybe it's some some people who are doing the packing or or somebody in the engineering department and just you know talk to the marketing department suggest maybe a more diversified playlist right there's tons of amazing music that released all the time so that's just you know it's 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 not about whinging and whining and talking about it it's about doing it so glad to hear you say that because especially uh, us, the, the white males that are in control, that are in the power system, that have control of the doorways, we need to specifically do things and develop strategies. We can't just talk about this and, and wring our hands. So yeah. I'm so glad to hear you make specific suggestions about that. Yeah, I, that's just, I mean, that's just one um, that, that's just one that's appropriate for literally for where we are right here, you know, yeah. and just walking around. And some rooms, are n n knocking it out of the park with music. Beautiful music, current music, contemporary stuff going on. Um, but a lot of rooms you walk by and it's the same shit. So, yeah. 
you seem to have a pretty cool hip uh, space there in, in Brooklyn, and I, I don't know, I, do you have a lot of young people working with you? Is that a thing you yeah. make an effort to do, to bring them in and sort of listen to them and, and hear how they're listening to music? Because people listen to music very differently than the older generation. It's true. Well, definitely, music is served up in a very different way than it was when I was growing up. I mean, I've been, I've been an audiophile since I was a little kid. So for me, it was records and cassettes. That was that was the music delivery system, and it's clearly, it's obviously not that in any way anymore. But um, so yeah, the people in my factory. So my part of the factory, so it's, it's sort of where the, the final assembly happens and packaging and all that kind of stuff. It is uh, more than half women employees. It is a diverse crowd. Uh, most of them are not audiophiles, and they're, they're only in the industry because they, they're working at Devor Fidelity. But they're all very intrigued, and they play their music out there. And it's a, a gradually... Um, as they're building these speakers and they get they get to hear them as we play and sort of play test each pair before they get actually boxed up all of them have gradually been converted to listening with a lot more intent and you know musical like i noticed that the stuff that's being played out in the factory changes gradually people get intrigued and kind of go down rabbit holes and are hearing things you know because the there are divorce fidelity you know weird sort of prototypes, but there's DeVore Fidelity speakers out there playing, and they're just like, I've never heard stuff like that, you know, when I listen on my AirPods, or... Do you ever pick up on some of those and add them to your own playlist, or to oh, the I ones you're playing for customers? I yeah. love it, yeah, we've got a new guy uh, in, and he's playing tons of, you know, just American, like, early roots music, and, and old-timey kind of stuff, bluegrass, not blue, pre-bluegrass stuff, so yeah, no, it's, it's amazing, one person, you know, yeah, it's... It's that diversity and everyone sort of essentially running the, the system for a couple of hours at a time every day, day after day after day. There's so much cross-pollination. So, yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's part of it in my own little microcosm in Brooklyn. Right. But, yeah, do it everywhere. Well, you know what? We all just have our own little microcosm, but we have ripples that go out from what we do, every action we have. And so to see you specifically doing things and specifically calling out uh, things and, and making changes in your own little world, that's really impressive. And I'm so glad you spent a few moments here to talk to us about it. So thank you for taking the time, John. My pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. It's Thomas Mulready from Cool Cleveland. We're here at Axe Bona 2023.